special because we take time to worship in the Lord's house and the presence is, of, of each, is, each of you is a blessing. Um, I want you to also take a bit of a special notice this morning. The Owens family is with us this morning and, and Catherine and Lorelai have come a long ways to be with us this morning. So it's so good to have them here and so good to see you. Welcome to all of you. And I think second place for the longest uh, journey goes to Ron and Rita King. Yeah. <laughs> um, in your bulletin this morning, there are some uh, announcements and some, some uh, things that, that you can be aware of uh, in the coming week. Please do take uh, notice that the rosebud that is on the on the table this morning is in honor of Harlow May, daughter of Lauren Webster and the proud grandmother of of uh, Cin, uh, Cindy is the proud grandmother of of Laura May. Not that you're old enough to be a grandmother. <laughs> no, love the name. And uh, and and uh, the. Uh, the uh, other things that are available for uh, your attention, and please do keep the folks on the prayer concern list as a part of your part of your prayer life in the coming week. And in particular, I guess I would add to that um, the family of Fred Bryce, whose service is tomorrow. Um, are there any other announcements, anything that I forgot, or anything else that we need to be aware of this morning? Doris. Well, I noticed that maybe we've forgotten to bring frozen foods for the Archuleta family. There's quite a few in the far one. Okay. Yeah, they must have brought some more. Yeah, there's a bunch in there. Uh, perhaps, perhaps somebody has brought some. But thank you. Thank you for, for bringing that to, to our attention. Um, our gathering song this morning is one that we are familiar with. Let me check first to see if my guitar is still in tune. I've got to tell you, being down here in the fellowship hall has made it really hard for this guy to stay in tune. <laughs> The guitar. However, most of the time, the way I play, you wouldn't know. Thank you. 
Friends, please join me in our responsive call to worship. Come, weary one. For God is in this place. Come, restless one. For God is in this place. Come, hopeful one. For God is in this place. God is in all places, always, and in every life. Friends, we worship the God who welcomes us into God's presence and begin with the hymn number 14 in glory to God for the beauty of the earth. <laughs> Amen. 
Because here the assurance of God's grace. We are still standing in the grace of Christ. Because, because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit. We are set free to love God and neighbor and to work for the reconciliation of the world. We have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Thanks be to God. One of the announcements that I neglected to make earlier, friends, is that uh, we took the Pentecost offering last Sunday, uh, and 40% of that Pentecost offering stays here to be used locally for, for uh, ministry in the community and the surrounding area. The, the total of the offering was $1,050, which means that we have $420 to spend on fans that will be donated through the community food pantry. So I want to thank you for your generous response to that offering and the difference that it will make in people's lives over the course of this summer in this part. Thank you. I have something that I want to share with my friends. By the way, on the table this morning, you'll see right in front of the cross a piece of artwork that Bella made to share this morning. It's, a, it's, it's Easter, right? It's Jesus and the empty, pro, uh, the empty tomb. Isn't that great? Yes. Thank you, Bella. Thank you. Oh, my, that's great. Yes. So, I want to show you something here. On the podium. On the podium. Oh, well, that, that. Thanks. I like that one. Oh, oh okay. okay. Now you have two. This is a picture of the world. You see that? It's the whole planet. And do you see some animals? There's a cow. Looks like there's... Does it? Do you like cows and horses and bulls? Gotta be careful around bulls. I'll get you. We have been given a special job by God. And that special job is to help God take care of not only the, the world, the earth, right? The whole world, but the animals too. Like fish. Do you see a fish on there? Ooh, yeah. That's an important one. And it looks like... What else? You know what? Sometimes we just make mistakes. And there's a... There's a... I missed that one, dude. Did you keep her from getting away? Oh, I bet you do.
Oh, and bears, and you don't forget <laughs> the sheep, the hogs, not scones. <laughs> <laughs> A get a gecko. Kibble gecko. Wow. You have. Hmm? You've got a lot of animals, don't you? You're really good at helping God take care of animals. Thank you. Join your hearts and minds and spirits together with me in a moment of prayer. We are surrounded even now, holy and gracious God, by more miracles than we could count. Every beat of our heart, every breath we take, no matter what direction, God, we turn our eyes, even here among one another, we see signs of miracle, of grace, of abounding love, of your goodness to us. In this time and place, God, give us the help we need to hear your word so that it finds a home in us and expression in what we do. We ask this and pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Our Bible passage this morning is taken from the Psalms. Psalm 8. A celebration of God's handiwork that is all around us. <coughs> A celebration of God's awesomeness and God's greatness, and a celebration of the role that we play and the space we occupy in God's design of things. O Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. You set your glory above the heavens. Out of the mouths of babes and infants, you founded a bulwark because of your foes to silence the enemy and the avenger. When I look at the heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars that you've established, what are human beings? That you're mindful of them, mortals, that you care for them. Yet, you've made them a little lower than God and crowned them with glory and honor. You've given them dominion over the works of your hands. You've put all things under their feet, all sheep and oxen, also the beasts of the field, the birds of the air and the fish of the sea, whatever passes along the, the paths of the sea, even horses and bulls and cows. O Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. This is the word of the Lord. Lucky Eddie, the likable sidekick of Hagar the Horrible from the comic strip of the same name, was sitting out under the night sky with a young woman who presumably was a bit of romantic interest. Lucky Eddie was staring up at a star-filled night sky, entranced, while his date sat in silence. 
Finally, Lucky Eddie broke the silence and said, you know, the longer I stare at the stars, the more irrelevant I feel. And after a moment of further silence, his date said, the longer you stare at the stars, the more irrelevant I feel. <laughs> you know, when I heard that, I thought of two things. I thought of how we are made, a part of us is made, for looking up. A part of us is made for looking up, and when we do look up, to look up in wonder, and to look up in awe, and to be led because of that to praise. I think, I think there's a part of us that's made for that, but there's also a part of us that is made for finding our place in that. Not ignoring relationship. Our relationship with God. Our relationships with each other. So, to be honest, I can empathize with both Lucky Eddie, Eddie and his date. Looking up at a, a star-filled sky fills us with wonder and awe and stirs our hearts to praise, but... We also have to have our gaze elsewhere from time to time, don't we? Not just, not just looking up, but also, and, and remember, we can't forget this part, looking around. Because there are miracles above us and there are miracles all around us, are there not? When was the last time you looked up? We have a hard time with that, I think, in part because of light pollution. <laughs> but when was the last time you really looked up and were filled with a sense of awe And feeling a little maybe small and irrelevant in comparison to the cosmos around us. But also, friends, feeling inspired. Feeling inspired by the beauty and the expanse of the universe. For example, uh, about, well, exactly one month ago today, Exactly one month ago today, along with human beings from all over the world, we got a chance to glimpse something absolutely spectacular. See, like Lucky Eddie, I get all geeked out. <laughs> I get all geeked out by the, the sights of what lie beyond our atmosphere. And this sight that we got to see beyond our atmosphere was genuinely spectacular. It was a uh, uh, never before seen by the human eye piece of God's handiwork. Awesome handiwork. Powerful handiwork. I am referring none other than to the impressive one of a kind drum roll please. <laughs> Sagittarius A. Well, let's hear it for Sagittarius A. Yay. What in the world is Sagittarius A? It's all far away. It's far away. It is the force that holds the Milky Way galaxy together. We've never seen it before. But it's at the center of the Milky Way galaxy. It is the gigantic black hole that is 4.3 million times the mass of our sun. It is the giant black hole 
that is 14.6 million miles across. It's 26,000 light years away from our solar system, and that old Sagittarius A has enough power that the entire Milky Way galaxy orbits around it. It's the force that keeps us together, literally. Impressive? Yeah. Well, I was kind of hoping you'd feel that way. <laughs> well, and what's even more <coughs> impressive to me is that our Milky Way galaxy is one of trillions and trillions of other galaxies. Every one of them, every single one of them, unique. And some of them have giant black holes at the center of them that would, that would dwarf good old Sagittarius A. What are we to make of that? What are we to make of, of, a, of a reality so immense? so breathtaking, so mind-blowing, what are we to make of that other than to, at some level, be filled with wonder and maybe a little bit of awe and hopefully some praise. Who must be the one? What, 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 what must the one who's behind all that be like? To be able to create trillions and trillions of those rascals, all of them unique, and, and who knows, who knows what they're filled with. How many stars, how many planets around those stars, and who might be on them? Well, what we know for sure, what we know for sure is we're one of them. What we know for sure is we're one of them, and we may feel pretty fragile and kind of small as a result of that. But by the grace of uh, an old poet, an old, old songwriter, we're given some words that might express a bit of how we feel. It, 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 both that sense of smallness and fragility, but also that wonder and awe and praise. Psalm 8, did you know that Psalm 8 is the very first praise hymn in the Hebrew songbook known as the Psalms? The very first song of praise comes to us in Psalm 8, and how appropriately so. I want you to imagine something with me for a minute. Would you? Thank you. You're good sports. <laughs> See, I want you to imagine for just a second that we could time travel. We could time travel, and we could time travel back thousands of years. Thousands of years. And we're sitting beside an ancient poet. Staring up at the stars, the Milky Way galaxy, before it was ever given that name. Staring up into the night sky at the glow of a giant full moon in all its glory, and suddenly your companion sitting next to you starts humming. <coughs> Suddenly, your companion sitting next to you breaks into song, being inspired by the vision before their eyes, and they can't help themselves, and they start to sing. O oh Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. O oh Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. You have set your grace.
glory above the heavens. Awestruck, filled with worship of the one who is capable of creating such a celestial panorama, and you were there. Oh, we're not done time traveling yet. We're going to fast forward. We want to fast forward from thousands of years ago to more recent history. Some of you were here for this, some not, sorry. Don't mean to be exclusive, it's just the way it works. Some of you were around in 1969. Mm -hmm. Some of you in 1969, in the summer of 1969, were sitting around your living room TVs, probably black and white. Yeah. And you were watching something. I want you to imagine not only that you're maybe sitting in your living room watching your black and white, but you're there. You are there coming down the ladder right after the very first person ever set foot on that moon that was so enthralling to the songwriter, right? Planted a foot on the moon. Amazing, isn't it? Can you imagine every single step of the process that it took to get somebody to the moon and back? To calculate that mathematically, to make it happen against the odds. Wow! Amazing, right? And they left some things behind on the moon. One of them was a, a silicon disk. And on that silicon disk on the moon is a message from 73 countries to mark that event. One of those countries was the Vatican. And do you know what the Vatican chose to put on their portion of that silicon disk? Oh, oh Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. Wow. See, feeling small and fragile and maybe even irrelevant is only half of the story of Psalm 8. Psalm 8 wants you to also imagine your awesomeness. Because of the God who made you. Because of the God who esteems you. Because of the relationship that we share with a God who could make trillions and trillions of galaxies all different. Who are we that you should think of us? Said the psalmist. Just kind of blew their mind, right? And yet, you have made us as little less than God. Wow. It isn't just our smallness, it's also another marvel that we are who we are in this dance of life with the triune God the maker of it all, the one who redeems it all, and the one who sustains it all in love and goodness. Wow! Isn't that amazing? Well, it is. When I look at the heavens, the work of your fingers, what are we that you're mindful of us, mortals, that you care for us, yet you've made us a little lower than God? and crowned us with glory and honor. God's fingerprints are not only all over the heavens, God, God's fingerprints are all over you. All over each of us. So given that, in our place in the scheme of things, how is that supposed to affect the way we look at ourselves? How might that affect the way we look at others? How might that affect the way we look at every other single living organism that we share this planet with? That is a part of this miracle of life that takes place on this fragile planet. Humble yet exalted. I saw a phrase the other day that said, Be humble for you're made of earth. Be noble for you're made of stars. It's both. It's both by God's design, right? 
I get the humble part. You know what I have trouble with? The exalted part. Oh, no, no, no. Not me. Sorry. No. I mean, I can see it in you. Don't get me wrong. But in me? Uh, reminds me of something that Marilyn Robinson, Mar Marion Williamson wrote. She said, our deepest fear is not that we're inadequate. Our deepest fear is that we're powerful beyond measure. It's our light, not our darkness, that most frightens us. We ask ourselves, who am I to be brilliant? <laughs> who am I to be gorgeous? Who am I to be talented? Who am I to be fabulous? Actually, who are you not to be? You're a child of God. Your playing small does not serve the world. There's nothing enlightened about shrinking so that other people will feel insecure around you. We're all meant to shine as children do. We were born to make manifest the glory of God that is within us. It's not just in some of us, it's in everyone. And as we let our own light shine, we unconsciously give other people permission to do the same. As we're liberated from our own fear, our presence automatically liberates others. I have to think that that is a part of what God calls us to in our place in the cosmos, in our place in this web of life. Why not be brilliant? Why not shine? Why not? Why not share? O oh Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. Thanks. Good friends, we are the recipients of gift upon gift upon gift from a gracious, loving God who gives abundantly, and a part of that is the gift of intimacy. The gift of intimacy that comes from God's own self visiting us, revealing God's self to us, and making a way for us to stand in the grace of a good God. To know, to know a part of what would be unknowable apart from Jesus. This God who creates trillions of galaxies is the God who came in a small child, who grew and became one of us, so that we might become more like Him, more like God. This morning we are celebrating the sacrament uh, of communion, that sharing of life that we have between one another and that life that we share with Jesus. He said that people will come from north and south and east and west and sit at table in God's kingdom, that there will be a grand communion, a cosmic gathering of all life at God's table, a table of peace and joy and love, a table where everything else has been set aside and done away with. A table where there is nothing but celebration of God and one another. Luke told us that when Jesus was sitting at table with his disciples, he, he broke bread and gave it to them and their eyes were opened and they recognized him. And so we do today as Jesus offers the same invitation to us. Friends, I invite you to join with me in the beginning of the great prayer of thanksgiving. This morning as we celebrate the sacrament of communion, I'm going to invite you to come forward, take a cup, and uh, we have bread that is available this morning. Take that, and then 
to partake of that, and, and you can take it back to your table with you if you'd like. And we will not be sharing these gifts all together, but at your, at your own time. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. Let us pray. It is right and good to, and joyful to give you thanks, God. God of mystery and miracle. God of wonder and awe and delight. When there was only darkness, you made light, and you have placed that light in us. You've claimed us as your own. When we forget our love for you, you don't forget us, sending prophets to turn us around, renewing your promises, reminding us of your never-failing love. We praise you. We thank you for Jesus, for his teaching and healing, his challenging and feeding his living and dying and rising again that we might be raised with him and all the world will be renewed in your love we thank you holy and gracious god that you pour out your spirit not only upon us who are gathered here but also on these gifts so that we might be christ's body to your world we might participate in new life. I come before you this day, God, in need and grateful for all your good gifts. Unite us with one and with each other and with you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. For we ask this and we pray this in the name of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen of his betrayal and rest, our Lord and Savior took bread, and after giving thanks to God, he broke it, saying, This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant, sealed in my blood for the forgiveness of sins. Drink it, all of you. Do this in remembrance of me. And so it is, my good friends, that whenever we share this bread and this cup, we proclaim the life-giving ministry, death and resurrection of Jesus until he comes to us to renew us completely and to make all things new. Jesus said, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry. Whoever believes in me will never thirst. And it was Jesus who said, I am the vine and you all are the branches. Apart from me, you can do nothing. Friends, the gifts are ready. The gifts of God for the people of God come and participate in the joyful Friends, I invite you to join your hearts and minds and spirits in a moment of prayer as we celebrate God's goodness and our life together in God's good scheme of things. Let us pray. We give you thanksgiving this day, holy and gracious God, that you are not a God far off. A God powerful, yes, and we need that. God capable, yes, and we need that. A God creative and imaginative beyond most of what we imagine. And we need that. But also a God who values intimacy and love and relationship. How, how everything, everywhere is connected to everything else at a fundamental level. How when a star explodes, life is given to the universe, and we are a part of that. The very atoms in our being flung across the cosmos to a world you have made that 
is beautiful and gorgeous and sustains us in every way. We pray, God, that you will continue to help make us good stewards so that everyone and everything flourishes here. Correct us where we need it. Inspire us where we need it. Redirect us as we need it. From the ocean depths to the mountain peaks, your world is full of diversity. We celebrate that, God. But you also invite us to look around and pay attention to the least of the ones around us, to the ones who fall between the cracks, to the ones who may not get noticed, to the ones who would prefer anonymity, or the ones who long for relationship and life is not the way they want it to be. We pray for those who are lonely. We pray for those who are lonely even in their own skin, for those who are addicted. For those who are angry and take that angry out, anger out in ways that damage others or themselves. We give you thanksgiving for those that you've given the gift of healing to. And for the way they use those gifts for the common good. Help us in our own life together, God, to pay attention to one another, one another in such a way that we all feel valued and, and welcomed and play an important part in your realm and in the expression of your will. May it be so for everyone, everyone on the planet, God. Whatever gets in the way of that, get rid of it. Whether it's around us or in us, hear the things that we pray. The situations of the world that are in need the situations of our lives or our neighbors or people we love that are in need. Hear it all. And may your will be done among us. For we would ask these things and pray these things in the name of Jesus Christ our Lord. The one who taught us to pray by saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Our offering plate for, for worship is at the, the back of Fellowship Hall on the table, and as you share your, your gifts and your responses to God's grace and goodness, I invite you now to join with me in, in a prayer that dedicates those gifts to God's glory. Let us pray. Excuse me. Use these gifts, God, to do more than we could believe or imagine. Building a world and justice and healing where there is enough for all. Amen. Our closing hymn, friends, is number 613 in the glory to God. <laughs>
out this day participating in the life of the triune God. By honoring mutuality, living in equality and justice, and celebrating the amazing diversity by which our communion is enriched. May the grace of Christ Jesus grant you peace. May the Holy Spirit guide you in all truth. And may the love of God fill your heart so that you may find hope in every circumstance of this life. And with our lives to give glory to God.